Yeah, hello everyone. Welcome to the first workshop of the hackathon. I guess I will start just by presenting myself and introducing me. <laughs> so my name is Slava. Uh, I'm uh, originally from Ukraine. Currently, I'm living in Portugal. Uh, I work in Aurora for the last uh, eight months or so. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I I was like a new guy entering the Web3 world uh, last autumn. So I'm kind of a newcomer here and learned everything I know right now just here. Um, before, I've been working as a software engineer in different companies, among them, for example, Grammarly. Maybe you heard about that one. Uh, they are doing like grammar, grammar checking for the English language. Um, but overall, I've been mostly working with functional languages, um, uh, doing some user interfaces, stuff like that, and uh, just decided to uh, like fulfill my curiosity uh, by coming here, learn something new. Uh, usually, I just love to like do some geeky stuff like mathematics or physics uh, in my free time. So blockchain was kind of similar experience for me, <laughs> where I learned a lot, and I hope uh, some of you will learn. Uh, uh, a lot here too on this hackathon. Uh, I should say probably that it's kind of hard, but don't worry. Uh, you can always uh, like stay at the right level of abstraction needed. You know, uh, you don't need to know every detail of how Aurora works. Uh, that's mostly my job. <laughs> uh, also, I want to say that probably for the next 45 minutes, which we have for the workshop, we won't do everything. Like it's hard to put uh, all stuff in just 45 minutes. So it will be just, uh, how to say, uh, like an easy going dialogue with me. We'll just talk, um, discuss questions. I will show you, uh, like I, my, my plan is to do an introduction to Aurora tell you what Aurora is. If you don't understand some peculiar stuff, like I will try to do it simple. Maybe I will include some comments, uh, which will be a bit technical, but if you don't understand those, don't worry. You can always treat Aurora as uh, uh, the instance of the an like another EVM chain. Just use it with your wallet, with MetaMask or your developing uh, uh, environment like hard hat or truffle, the way you use Ethereum, uh, and it will work uh, in the same way because it's fully EVM compatible network. Okay, let's start. Mm, let me share my screen. It's already showing some slides. Yeah, I decided to reuse uh, the presentation we already have, which talks about the Aurora infrastructure and ecosystem. Uh, can you see it, Joanna, right? Uh, yes, looks good. Great, great. So it contains uh, this slide with uh, the fast Aurora overview, which says uh, to us that Aurora is a solution that allows execution of Ethereum contracts on highly performant near blockchain. And basically, that's what it is. Uh, so Aurora is secretly based uh, on the another blockchain. For the user, it would be it's it's kind of hidden from the user, right? So you just have uh, the usual interface of interacting with the chain uh, with Aurora, but uh, Aurora is actually a smart contract which runs on the near blockchain. Uh, why it's cool? It is cool because we don't need to like create our validation validator nodes and stuff like that. We don't need to uh, impose our own um, um, consensus mechanisms like proof of stake or proof of work. So we just decided to use the best, in our opinion, uh, blockchain existent, like L1 blockchain existent on the market and chose the near blockchain for doing that uh, because it's scalable, uh, it has a needs sharding system, uh, it's really fast and it's really cheap. Uh, so it's really cool because uh, you don't need to pay much for your transactions. Gas, uh, there is like no gas and congestion is issues on this uh, blockchain. 
But what it lacks, it lacks the familiar interface. Uh, and familiar uh, interface is usually like EVM or Ethereum-like interface of interaction. And that's where Aurora came to the market. So we just introduced that. So people will be able to use near blockchain by using uh, the familiar way of interaction with the, the Ethereum. Uh, so to sum up, Aurora just an EVM built it as a smart contract on the near blockchain. Um, it's implemented using the library called Sputnik VM. I guess uh, it's just uh, that technical info, which if you are a newcomer, don't worry, it doesn't matter much for you. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, for people who want to run like their own nodes, we have uh, a standalone RPC package and you can uh, like bootstrap, set up your own node uh, and relay your transactions uh, from users uh, to the near nodes directly by using that package. Uh, we have actually a new article, a fresh article published on the dev portal just last Friday about this. So the spinning up your own or own node is about that stuff. Um, yeah, and because the interface is the same as in the Ethereum ecosystem, all the tools supported in the Ethereum ecosystem are supported in Aurora. So MetaMask, Truff Truffle, Hardhat, Remix, etc. everything is supported here. You just need to change your configuration. I will show you uh, that in the uh, ID really soon. Uh, we will see how it's done. How like what parameters do you need, like chain ID, RPC, URL, stuff like that. Uh, base token in Aurora is the same is, uh, as in the Ethereum uh, blockchain. It just is. Um, and actually on the mainnet, uh, as well as on the testnet, all of the Aurora is is just a bridged is. So Aurora ecosystem has what's called rainbow bridge. It's a bridge uh, which allows you to transfer tokens bet between Ethereum, Near, and Aurora. Uh, and originally, all of the ETH was on the Ethereum blockchain, and then it was transferred using using the Rainbow Bridge to the Aurora network. Uh, it was transferred from like mainnet uh, from on Ethereum to the Aurora mainnet, and girly test network. Uh, Ethereum was transferred using Rainbow Reach to the testnet uh, of the Aurora. So right now, if you want to develop on the testnet, usually you will need to some uh, to have some test ease. And to get that, you will need to use testnet Rainbow Bridge. Uh, and you will need to like get some faucet uh, girly ease uh, on the girly testnet first. Uh, and after that, use Rainbow Bridge to transfer it to the Aurora testnet and you will be able to deploy your contracts and pay for the gas uh, using that testnet gas uh, you obtained. If you don't catch up something what, uh, about which uh, I'm talking about right now, don't worry. We are like all the time in, uh, in the, like at your reach in the Discord. Feel free to mention us, uh, say hi to us and just like write all of your questions you will have, like any problems with bridging, getting testnet uh, ease or stuff like that, feel free to write to us. We will help you right away, uh, or at least as soon as we can. Uh, Aurora also have, uh, has Aurora Plus product, uh, which is actually the main source of the free transactions uh, for the past uh, few years in Aurora. Uh, or year, probably year only. Anyway, uh, the idea of Aurora Plus, I will just go to the site and show what is that. Uh, it encapsulates like staking here and staking uh, is basically just for, for newcomers. Like if you have some amount of tokens, in our case, it's Aurora token, you can stake those and get your benefits from it, uh, your rewards. As you can see, you will get like 90% uh, right now of annual uh, like reward rate uh, in this staking contract. 
and you can stake those here. You can just buy it here on on ramp. You will need to sign something that you are not uh, from US because it's not uh, available right now to the US persons, I guess. Uh, but anyway, if you will have non-zero balance here, you will be able to stake. Uh, and after staking, you will get your rewards uh, here. And you will be able to earn some money uh, by staking your Aurora tokens with Aurora Plus. But uh, it's not only that. Aurora Plus also giving uh, you 50 free transactions per month. As you can see, I already used three of mine already this month uh, and uh, to use those you will need to add uh, to your metamask the endpoint called aurora plus is basically the same as the main endpoint bus but with a special key attached which uh, actually uh, gives you the free transactions you can find it here if you go to the aurora plus network uh, item in the menu on the aurora plus site um, okay, let's go back to the presentation. Uh, that's it, I guess, in terms of the introduction to Aurora. Maybe someone has any questions. Please let me know. I just went back to the chat to see if someone was typing something. Uh, no questions yet. Don't worry, I'll uh, pop them out <laughs> if someone messages anything. Okay, okay, yeah, let me know. Let me know if there will be some questions. Okay, let's continue. Let's take a look what's what's ahead in the presentation. Yeah, so overall, uh, this slide or this picture illustrates in the most uh, like efficient way uh, what Aurora is. It's a bit technical and probably not needed for most of users. Mostly it's like for... Uh, uh, people who run uh, their own node, and basically it illustrates it. So it shows how the Aurora node uh, works overall. Uh, but it will be, uh, I guess, interesting for everyone. I will try to explain it. So at the number one, you can see user which comes with the uh, Ethereum transaction to us, uh, to our EVM. And he comes to the second part, which is the RPC node. And this node, it wraps the Ethereum TX transaction into new transaction uh, and sends it wrapped to, the, to, to some near uh, node. So basically what happens, we convert Ethereum transaction to the near one, send it to the near node. And after that, basically like part of the near blockchain, it just uh, executes it on what is called Aurora engine. An Aurora engine is kind of Aurora because it's just the EVM contract uh, on top of the near protocol. So it executes the transaction, changes the EVM state. So the overall like, state of Aurora blockchain. And then it goes back and uh, like user pays for the EVM gas. And that's it, the cycle ends. That's how it works. Uh, What's useful in this, like you, you can think that probably it's like maybe over, uh, like it's it's maybe a way too complex, right? Why do we need Aurora if you can just like maybe create a uh, direct uh, calls to some blockchain? Maybe it should be called like Super Aurora or something, you know? But in this case, uh, we are decoupling the relations between user RPC and blockchain. And what it gives to us, it's really important. It gives to us the control on how much a uh, user will pay for the gas, for example. And we come to really easy implementation of the account abstraction. Uh, and account abstraction it just means like free transactions for user or at least uh, uh, controlling how much user will pay for the transactions. You can read also more on the dev portal here in the abstraction Borealis article or in the how the Aurora Relayer 2.0 works. Uh, okay, let's go further. Uh, yeah, Rainbow Bridge overview. I guess we won't take a close look to this slide. Overall, 
I already said bridge is used to bridge the tokens from Ethereum to near or Aurora. In your case, you'll probably need Aurora. Uh, but maybe if you'll be bu building something on BOS bounty, you will need to bridge something to near. Uh, you will uh, find a nice introduction to bridge here in the, in the official doc documentation of the Aurora. Uh, you can also access it from here, from the dev portal at the top right corner. Uh, so you will have a bridge sanction here, which includes introduction to bridge, bridge overview, all of the transfer overviews. You will have uh, the whole full tutorial here about how to bridge into any direction from Ethereum to Aurora or from Aurora to Ethereum and some advanced features also. So I won't stop on those to have more time for code. Uh, Aurora Plus, I already did that. We've seen. We have recently introduced what's called cross-contract calls, and it's really cool feature which enables uh, make, make make available for us to uh, call Aurora contracts from the near con uh, smart contracts and vice versa uh, near contracts from the Aurora contracts. So you can run uh, write your contract in Solidity, for example, in the EVM environment and use some information from the near smart contract right away, which was written in Rust. Uh, and uh, we already provided you with some tutorials on our dev portal. You can see building a game using near Aurora and BOS. It's really cool article, especially in the context of the game bounty and BOS bounty. So please uh, take a look here. You will see a really nice example of how cross contract calls can um, like uh, help your product and make the development more like more efficient uh, and basically this article will tell you why you should use near and when you should use near for what type of uh, the calculations and stuff like that usually it's like something challenging so if you need to do something heavy it's better to do on the near and on Aurora it's it is better to just like read the state of that contract uh, then and do some more lightweight stuff uh, but that's like more on the more profound uh, side of things um, yeah let's skip this infrastructure and MEV is that so important right now mm. In terms of ecosystem, we have a lot of different stuff. And uh, the most important is uh, like ecosystem parts for the development and a hackathon are here in the ecosystem tools. So if you will go here, you will find the developer tools here, which includes our explorer for the mainnet. Uh, you can read. Uh, a short article or manual about it here. Uh, go directly, see the transactions, play with contracts there. Um, and the same way for the hard hat, MetaMask, Truffle. Like if you don't know how to connect to the MetaMask wallet, please go here. It will explain everything to you. For example, if you need to add some network, you will need to enter the name, RPC URL, um, chain ID, currency symbol, and you will be good to go. Uh, there is also an example of deploying an ERC20 token, the like coin token using the Remix here, and hard head and truffle tutorials. Also, we have three RPC providers and manuals for uh, like about them are here also on the developer portal. So in the case, you'll probably not need that, but in the case, if you will need the better uh, like uh, control over your nodes, you should go here. We also have indexers and oracles. So indexers is basically a stuff like a database which uh, collects information about the blockchain transactions happening there and kind of allow you to give it more structure, right? So for example, uh, on the blockchain, we just have a lot of rainbow bridge transactions, but if we, need to have uh, an easy access to those, it, it's better to write an indexer. So that's why we need like Covalent or the graph here. 
um, and we need to collect those transactions from the blockchain, put them into tables, and then just access those from our depths, like from JavaScript or Node.js stuff. And oracles uh, are usually the entities like which uh, gives us the access to some external systems, like allowing uh, us to execute some calculations depending on real world inputs or outputs. So it's kind of a way to introduce the effects to your blockchain calculations. Uh, hey, Slava, uh, we do have some questions um, in the chat. I think Boris is um, typing some answers out, but it'd be great to kind of um, hear what you think as well. Yeah, let me see. Let me see. Make sure. Yeah, about Solidity. Yes, Solidity is like the main language of the Aurora. You, of course, can use any kind of language which uh, supports DVM compatible contracts. You can use Viper, for example, also. Uh, but usually we use Solidity here. It's like uh, an industry standard. So uh, in terms of the front-end development, uh, you just will need to use any kind of front-end library you want. Like it doesn't matter in which way you will write your React components, but we have a BOS bounty. So if you want to try, you can do your React UI in the BOS and fulfill the near bounty uh, by doing that. You know, uh, In terms of how the UI will connect to the blockchain and stuff like that, you will need to use some kind of Web Web3 uh, libraries like Web3.js or Ethers.js. Uh, I will write some like this or Web3.js. And you will need to call the methods there to find out some information about your contract uh, and stuff like that to connect the information to the, um, to, to the interface, right? Uh, there is a really cool game, actually, which I recommend you. It taught me a lot. It's called Crypto Zombies. I, if you are new by, I really advise you to go to their site. Crypto Zombies is really cool. They will teach you how to do the smart contracts. They will teach you how to write UI and connect everything. So like in a few days, you will be able to do your first really simple project and connect everything, uh, like connect the dots <laughs> and create something. OK, let's go and move forward to the code right now. So I've prepared a small hardhead project here, which uh, actually realizes the staking contract. Uh, we will see it soon. Like just to remind you, like staking is just a procedure where you, like for example, you are a user and you have some amount of uh, some tokens, and you usually those tokens, like uh, the tokens which you could stake, they are determined by your by the staking contract. So there is a contract on the blockchain, basically like. Uh, program, right, where you can go and say, hey, I have like some amount of those tokens. Can I leave it with you? You can use those. And then after some time, like you will give me some rewards. So you just leave those tokens for some time at the contract. And when you come back, you can unstake those and get your rewards after that. Uh, we will take a closer look at that contract soon. Uh, so you will be uh, but you will understand better what is that. Uh, let's take a look at the parts of the projects, what's inside of it. Uh, so first of all, the hardhead project heart is uh, at the hardhead config.js file. Uh, that's the part where uh, the configuration uh, is done. So I have like few, like two actually, uh, environment variables defined here, or a plus key and Aurora private key. So those are the keys, like private key is the key which uh, actually signs the transactions. You can get it in the MetaMask. So if you go to MetaMask, you'll be able to go into account details and see it there. You will just need to copy it, export it uh, in the terminal, in the console, and then uh, using this dot and, uh, oh, sorry, process env and dot env uh, stuff, uh, it will be just 
imported to those variables uh, in, in the, inside the GS file. So the main uh, work done here is actually defining your networks. So currently we have four networks here. Local is just like predefined from the hard hat. And we have three Aurora networks. First one is the mainnet. As you can see, I attached Aurora plus key here at the end. So all of my transactions will be costless there. Oh, sorry, not all, uh, only 50. Only 50 of my transactions will be costless. Uh, on the testnet, I decided to pay with my girly ease. I already have some balance. If I will go to the MetaMask, you can see that I have 0 0.08 ease there. It's, it's more than enough to deploy a bunch of contracts on Aurora uh, because transaction cost is only like a couple of cents per transaction and that's it. Uh, Hackathon Silo is actually special uh, network chain set up specially for the Hackathon and which we encourage you to use. Uh, it's a little bit uh, simplified because it doesn't have bridging but you still uh, can deploy your own tokens there. You can deploy your own contracts, build any kind of systems using those. And what's like the best part of that, all of the transactions there will be gas uh, free and we will pay for all of those. So uh, for every hackathon participant, you won't need uh, to have your ease to pay for the gas on the hackathon silo. And you can do more than 50 free transactions a month like if you will need 100, okay, no problem. Um, yeah, and uh, all which we, all that's different here is just URL and chain ID. Chain ID. So chain ID is a little bit different. Uh, that's kind of shows you that it's another chain. Uh, and that's actually a big part of, um, of Aurora right now, one of our big, initiatives called Aurora Cloud. You can find, find out more by going to this site. Uh, I will share it with you here. Uh, so Aurora currently is concentrated on like scaling blockchains and creating a, like uh, a lot of different blockchains. Why? Because like different companies, different uh, businesses uh, have a, a different uh, set of rules uh, to be imposed inside their uh, own blockchains and uh, that's why we decided to share our expertise like and just basically provide people with their own auroras like and if business wants to create their own blockchain we can easily do that by just releasing one more smart contract on near uh, with new parameters uh, and what's cool with this it will be fully interoperable with all other aurora silos so it will act as an ecosystem you will be able to interact with near with aurora with any other silo and you kind of have that like network effect on your business here uh, we also will release aurora pass really soon in a few weeks we will you will see the new wallet from aurora especially uh built for, for users to uh, ease uh, the use of the web3 technologies by web2 users so it will be really easy to install it uh, just uh, register there with your touch ID or face ID and you're ready to go uh, with your new wallet uh, by for, for using like Aurora ecosystem stuff. And Borealis Business is, is also uh, the new initiative which, which will be released in a few weeks. It will be about uh, uh, the free transactions, but for businesses. So for example, if you are a business and you want to have free transaction for your users, you will just come to us, uh, to, to us, and we will provide you with a special subscription uh, where you stake your tokens and you will get the free transactions for your users. So your users could be from the Web2 world and it kind of interplays with Aurora Pass really well because users will be able to install Aurora Pass and use your product using the Borealis business right away without paying for gas with free transactions and they won't even know that they are using the blockchain. Uh, that's kind of the big factor or like the direction in which Aurora company is going right now. Let's move on. So like Hackathon Silo is another instance of Aurora 
uh, as well as testnet actually uh, deployed on the near uh, blockchain uh, especially for the use in the hackathon we will uh, remove it uh, eventually after hackathon ends so uh, kind of you will need to transfer your project later to the mainnet anyway uh, especially uh, if you win uh, i guess and and the projects will be like uh, uh, will give you some profits right in the future uh, okay so we have four of those here uh, we have contracts folder uh, where we have two contracts uh, i will come back to those uh, soon we also have test folder with tests written for those contracts and uh, scripts folder uh, scripts folder with the deploy deployment script to deploy your contracts uh, so Overall, the process of the smart contract development in the Ethereum compatible chains looks like that. You go, uh, like you install your hard hat uh, and you start writing your contracts. So in our case, we want to have a staking contract. And to have a staking contract, what do we need? Let's, let me collapse everything just to see everything more clear. So inside the staking contract, we have, <coughs> sorry, we have uh, two types of tokens. So ERC20 is just a token type. Uh, and uh, we have two types of tokens. One token is staking token and another token called reward token. So uh, staking and reward token could be the same, but they shouldn't be. So you can actually reward your users uh, with the different type of token. And we also will need a reward trade this reward rate will uh, be per second reward rate. So how many of the reward tokens you will give users for staking one second uh, of time uh, with this contract. So uh, inside the state, this, this contract will have uh, a map which has address as its key and stake structure as the value. And inside the stake structure will be just the amount of the coins staked and the timestamp where those coins were staked. So that's kind of it. That's uh, the data that, that will be stored. We also will have three events here, staked, unstaked, and reward rate updated. Uh, and uh, the deal with events is the next one. Like you need to use events to be able to easily index your blockchain transactions and like what happens. So usually when you will use like Web3.js or Ether.js library, you will be able to subscribe for the events on the blockchain. And then just when the transaction happen, that event will come to your JavaScript code and you will be able to parse uh, the, um, like what exactly happened. For example, you can build a list of users who stake their tokens and show them that list inside your UI, right? Um, OK, and inside the constructor, constructor is just the function which call, is called uh, during the deployment of the contract. So the first time it's deployed. Uh, and uh, it just sets all of the variables here. So it sets staking token, reward token, and reward rate. Uh, later, the reward rate will be a you will be able to change it using this function. Uh, it's external and only owner can use it, but you will like uh, only owner will be able to change it. So uh, if another user comes here, this only owner modifier will not allow uh, him or her to modify their reward rate. So it will be fixed and only owner of the contract will be able to do this. And we also have three functions, stake, unstake, and calculate, calculate reward. Uh, you can also see that uh, stake and unstake functions have that non-reentrant -re uh, modifier, which actually prevents uh, the re what's called re-entrancy attack. Uh, I guess like more profound users already heard about that. It's kind of uh, an, a vulnerability which allows uh, like hackers to drain your contract from the money, uh, or for example, stake a few times, even if they don't have that amount of money, so they will drain more rewards from you. Uh, and that makes sure that this kind of attack won't happen. Uh, let's take at the stake event. So we have a 
small require here that the amount should be uh, greater than zero, right? So we cannot stake zero or minus. Um, and then after this, uh, if uh, the amount is bigger, we just transfer uh, the this amount from the message sender uh, to the address of the contract and increase uh, inside the mapping by the key message sender the amount by that amount and record the timestamp with a block timestamp and emit staked events. So that's kind of it. It's really simple, nothing uh, too hard. Uh, unstake function will be similar, but other way around. So it will also calculate uh, calculate the reward. And if reward is greater than zero, it will transfer it, I guess. Yeah, it it, it, it will use transfer, uh, oh, sorry, reward token contract and transfer it uh, uh, to the message sender. And after that, it will decrease the staked stake amount and update the timestamp. So and emit unstaked uh, event. Calculate reward in our case is really simple. So reward rate is per second. So we just uh, calculate the amount of staking uh, seconds and we multiply it by the reward rate by the user stake amount. And that's it. So it's really simple, but you can use any kind of staking. You can write more dynamical one where, for example, the longer you um, stake, the bigger the reward is. And if you stake just for a little of time, it won't be so big. Uh, like use some, I don't know, uh, parabolic function or something or some ex kind of weird exponential. Uh, anyway, uh, do we have any questions in the chat right now? Uh, no, not right now. All good. I see Armando Medina is typing. Maybe he has something. Oh. Yeah, yeah, of course. I will show the testing right now, of course. Let's go. Let's go with testing. Let's go. We have a direct request, so let's jump into it. So testing, and I feel that I don't have much time. I will show you as much as, as I can, but to be sure that you are covered, let me share with you this link. So this is hard hat tutorial, and it includes everything you need to know. Like everything about which I'm talking right now is there. There is a contract writing stage. There is a testing stage. There is deployment stage. Everything is explained there on even simpler uh, example. So please uh, save that link or just go to the developer portal, open the hard hat tutorial on, on the ecosystem page here. So you just go here, right? Uh, go to ecosystem tools, open hard hat, and you will also see a lot of uh, the similar steps done here. Yeah. OK, let's jump jump into the testing right now. So uh, Hard Hat use, uses a uh, Mocha uh, library for the test. So this, this describe stuff is just like a packet or a number of uh, the tests uh, going on. So here we describing the bunch of tests for the staking contract. We uh, defined some variables here to be used in our tests. And we defined before each function, which will be uh, called before each test. Let me collapse everything. Uh, yeah, you see every test is the function called it. And uh, it, uh, it like it is called in this way because it's readable, you know. So we can say it should allow users to stake tokens, right? Or it should prevent users from staking zero tokens. And it's it's just like a convenient stuff to to read the tests right away and to understand what we are trying to test here. So uh, usually every test requires some predefined. Uh, uh, scene of the execution, like to pre-install, pre-deploy your contracts, right? And that's what's done with a before each function here. Um, so inside it, you will see that we have a predefined reward rate per hour in our case. Uh, we also 
I use in here the Ethers uh, library and we use get signers function here to have the deployer, like the first user will always be the deployer, the, the guy who uh, like deployed the contracts and uh, the all the next users will be like some random users which you can use in your tests. So we need only two users here, <coughs> sorry. And uh, uh, we are just getting like ERC20 factory to deploy a few tokens. The first token will be staking token called uh, staking token and have symbol STK. Uh, so we are just deploying it with the function deploy and wait for it to be deployed. Then we deploy reward token with the symbol RWD here. And then we are ready to deploy the staking contract. So we create in the get contract factory for it. And then we calculate second rate here, right? Because we know that we should provide per second rate. So we know that this uh, stake, uh, staking contract should give us one ether per hour. So we divide it by the number of seconds in hour and we have our per second reward rate. We put it into the um, staking contract constructor. So we just run on this factory method deploy with the staking, con uh, stake staking token address, reward token address and reward rate. And you can see that those are in direct correspondence with the constructor here, which we declare, declared here, right? So we just have staking token, reward token and reward rate here. And those three arguments are the same here in the tests. So they will just go into the constructor and the overall contract will be deployed to the blockchain. Um, Okay, let's go further. And also we need to mint some tokens here, right? So we are minting uh, how many? It's like one, one million. Yeah, so those guys are really rich in tests. So we are minting one million is uh, equivalent of the staking token uh, for user one and one million for the user two. We also mint one million for the deployer and then we transfer to transfer those uh, to the staking contract address. So uh, on the staking contract address, we also have like one million. Okay, so that's like predefined uh, setup for the test. And now we can go and write some. So let's take a look at the really simple test should allow users to stake tokens. So we just take staking token and use the connect function here. Why do we need to connect? Because if you want to use this, it will think that you are calling the staking token uh, function from the uh, deployer perspective. And if you want to use another user, you need to use connect function. So we say, let's assume that user one approves uh, this number 500 of the ether, uh, oh sorry, of the staking tokens, uh, and then uh, staking contract on the behalf of the first user stakes those tokens. So we basically just stake the 500 of the staking tokens from the first user. And after that, we expect that user one stake, which is just uh, that amount of the token staked in the stakes map of the staking contract will be equal to the 500. So that's what it checks. This expect function comes from the Chai library here. So that's like an assertion um, library to be used uh, with Mocha. And all other tests are written in the same way, in really similar way. Uh, there is a peculiar stuff which I wanted to show you today is about how to emulate the time in tests. So for example, if you want to emulate that the user has been staking for some amount of time, you can use this, like Ether's provider send EVM increase time and mine to advance time by some amount of hours. So in this case, you just need to put amount of seconds. So we put seconds in hour, but if you put like two zero multiplied by this, we will advance by two hours, right? Uh, so it's kind of cool because you can like track forward the time uh, and then 
uh, get the rewards and check those, like ex uh, uh, expect that the reward difference to be uh, at the ex some acceptable error here. So after you test a written, you can just go uh, to the terminal to create a terminal, you go and create it here with a new terminal command. And you will need to run what's called npx uh, hard hat test function. So you can see that it will say to us, like, see, you have those tests, the like seven or eight of those, and all of those are passing, are seven of those, yeah. And so all of those are passing, so everything is tested out, everything is working correctly. And then, for example, if I want to like change something and maybe make it uh, not working, like let me put one here, and you will see that the first test will fail, and it's a, it will say, see, we were expecting different amount of the tokens, actually, and uh, there is some problem. So that's usually how it's done. Like you don't even need to deploy those. Before testing, you will need to compile your contracts. And to compile those, you will just need to run npx hard hat, uh, sorry, compile. Ah, and it says nothing to compile because I already compiled mine. But anyway, it will create the folder called artifacts and there will be a folder contracts here uh, where you will find Oh, sorry, build info. Seems ah yeah right those folders yeah. So you will see the JSON files here, which includes the I contract ABI and bytecode. So it's kind of the compiled contract, and those ABIs are usually needed to call the contract met methods in your Web three GS libraries and stuff like that. So it's cool to exp uh, export those from here and use those in your JavaScript code, for example. Let me check the chat. Uh, Armando, please let me know if I covered everything you wanted to know. Uh, just write, write more if you have more questions. Uh, yeah? OK, great, great. I'm happy. I'm happy with it. <laughs> OK. Of course, of course, you need to repeat everything by yourself to get it. Uh, it just need practice uh, to get uh, acquainted with everything. Uh, and let's let's deploy. Let's let's deploy and see that everything is actually working as as expected. It seems my water has uh, ended, so <laughs> time is running, and we are approaching the end of the workshop soon, I guess. Yeah, so after you wrote the contracts, compiled those, you tested those, uh, the last step is to deploy. And to deploy, you will need to use another command called run. So you'll need to run script, which is called deploy here, and you'll need to use your network. Uh, but of course, before running, you will need to write it. Uh, overall, you already write like had written that during your test inside the before each function. So it's, it's, it is already here, the deployment, uh, the deployment of those two tokens and the staking contract. So what you need to do is just like create a new file here, create the main function, uh, get your uh, factories, add a bunch of console log stuff, like just to have the addresses. So deployer address will be mine address, uh, the private key of which I've stored in, in the raw private key here and used in the configurations for every cha chain uh, here. Um, so overall, uh, we are just deploying two tokens. We are outputting to the console log uh, the addresses of those tokens. And uh, after that, we deploy the staking contract and uh, outputting its address. And after obtaining those addresses, you will be able to go to the Explorer and verify the contracts, play with them in Explorer, or just use them directly in your JavaScript code uh, with some web 3 libraries to be displayed in your dApp. So let's try and deploy everything to the Hackathon Silo. Uh, on the Hackathon Silo, 
we can take a look at my MetaMask. I will go to Hackathon Silo. You can see that I have no ease. The balance is zero. And uh, like it seems that I won't be able to deploy if, if I had to pay for the gas. But for now, we don't need to pay because uh, Aurora is paying for you. So if I click the enter, we just need to wait a bit. So it just outputted my address here. That's my address there uh, with which I'm deploying. Let's wait a bit. So you see the staking token is already deployed to this address, 0xde7, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we can even go to the Hackathon Explorer to find it. You just can go to your encode Hackathon instructions, which are currently on the top of the developer portal. Uh, and in the Hackathon Silo section, you'll see Explorer Hackathon Dev. So that's your Explorer where you can see your transactions happening. I will just put my, it's so young, you see only 20 transactions. Uh, I will go to my address and see the latest, uh, the latest transactions. Probably everything is completed. Yeah. If I go back to the hard hat, we see that staking token was deployed, reward token was deployed, staking contract is deployed, everything is there. And from now on, you can find out that, for example, let's take a look. So these transactions took like 1.1 second and it created the contract 003A, which is actually the staking contract. And to, ver to verify it, we will just need to go here uh, go to the code section, uh, click verify and publish, use flattened source code, and we will need to put the name of the contract here, uh, choose the correct version of the uh, compiler, and you can find, find it here at the top of your contract. You include that pragma solidity here, uh, and you need to obtain your solidity contract code and to get it, you will need to use a flatten command, like npx hard hat flatten, and output it to some file like flatten soul. So in this file, you will have your code. You'll just need to copy paste it. And after that, you'll be able to uh, verify the contract and use it. But uh, I found out this today. There is a small problem with this in a hard hat right now. And the problem is with SPDX licenses. So actually you will need to remove uh, like the repeating SPDX licenses here by the hand or using some clever script. Please contact us, we'll help you with that if you, if you need this. Uh, I will point you to the scripts. Uh, right now there are some issues open for the hard hat to resolve this and I hope it will be resolved soon. But overall, yeah, that's the, the process, how it's done. Uh, let me now just answer your questions. Please, please, you're welcome to write more, ask me more in the chat, or maybe later in the Discord. Uh, yeah, I guess that's, um, that's it on my side. Uh, thanks so much for your presentation. Absolutely loved um, at the very beginning to tell you um, to tell us about your journey into kind of Web3 and then also um, the explanations and also demonstrations. So learned a lot, super, super insightful. So thanks so much, Slava. But as Slava said, please do pop any questions you have. Uh, appreciate it. it's been quite a long session. Uh, so of course, if you uh, want to go to Discord and want to drop a message in our technical um, was it technical uh, questions channel? Please do that and we'll tag Slava uh, so that you can get your answers. But of course, if you have any questions right now, please do uh, pop them in the chat. You can also ask any personal questions if you want. If you don't want to talk about technology, you want to talk more about me, <laughs> my Discord <laughs> username, uh, let, let me send it to you. Let me send it to you. I will probably just mark myself somewhere in the encode tech channel. I will say hi to do this. Amazing. Uh, any questions, uh, technical and personal, uh, uh, please feel free to uh, drop them into the chat. 
I mean, if no one has kind of a, a personal question, I, I guess I have one just out of curiosity. Um, kind of through your journey so far, what do you think has been kind of the most challenging uh, thing you've you've faced in terms of kind of oh, stepping into web? I know, I know, I definitely know. <laughs> it was developer portal. Like developer mm -hmm. portal for me, it was the biggest initiative on the DevRel site in Aurora, like for the ha last half year or so. It was really big project uh, to make with the limited time and resources, and I'm pretty happy with the result we have. We already uh, put in a really great materials there and trying to encourage the auditory and ecosystem. Yeah. So th th that was probably the most <laughs> the, the most uh, like the hardest challenge overall. Oh, I bet. Yeah, sounds uh, difficult like, to get. Kind of course, of learning is really gradual. I mean, you know, still after months of work, working here, uh, sometimes I notice, oh, I didn't actually knew uh, what is that. Like, you know, because sometimes after, for example, f first months of work, you're like, okay, like, it seems I kind of get it. Like, mm -hmm. it seems I understood what is that. But then a few months more come and you're like, oh, no, no, no. I knew now a lot more about Aurora and like now, now I understand better. <laughs> so it's just the matter of like uh, digging deeper, uh, looking at the GitHub repositories, for example, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, there, there is much more to it that I knew before. Uh, for example, I'm pretty amazed with our infrastructure and stuff like that. I'm still not getting every detail of it. But it's really cool. It's really cool. It's like, in some terms, it's better than like using just a plain near infrastructure and just nodes near provides us because we have some uh, like uh, uh, private uh, uh, optimizations done on the Aurora site, which makes everything happen like faster and more efficient for user and businesses. Uh, let me see. Aman, could you please finish your question? I see personal question. What is the criteria of, and I don't, uh, don't understand what, of what, criteria of what? Could you please end, end the question? Um, it says on mine about the Aurora team, about the judging of the grant applications. I'm not sure if you can see that on your... Oh, now, now I see. Yeah, grant applications. Uh, Actually, I don't know. Like, uh, I don't know. Like about grant application, I'm not in in into the, those right now. Uh, probably you should just contact the partnership uh, department. And usually, I send people to the to this link in terms of the grants, uh, the partner link to the Aurora Dev site. You just go there, fill the form, and then the other person will, like will contact you in terms of the criteria. You just need to be viable in the business, profitable. <clears throat> you know, if you will give the profit to the ecosystem, if you'll give the profit to people, we will give profit to you. <laughs> so that's how it works. Uh, like it's just a, a positive feedback loop, right? And Hashman wrote, when will the recording will be made available? Uh, I guess it will be available right away, right, jo Joanna? Uh, uh, probably soonest as tomorrow. Uh, my team will edit and just, yeah, make sure everything is a bit more seamless. Oh, okay. Okay. And um, yeah, Hacker Pack, uh, it will be updated in Hacker Pack, but also um, if you go on our dedicated Aurora Discord channel, there's a section that says README. Uh, we'll be posting all the recordings on there as they are published. So yeah, uh, keep an eye out for those. Mm -hmm. Aman is asking about what type of depths in terms of NFT finance we're looking for in our ecosystem. And like, it's hard to answer, you know, because uh, like, it's the goal of the hackathon for people to come and answer that question for us. Because usually like specialists have a little bit uh, like adjusted eye, you know, we just already seen too much <laughs> and it's hard to come with something new. So. In the first uh, uh, way, like we need to, uh, or we want to see something new, fresh, and uh, the new usage of the NFT technology. Uh, from my perspective, as like tech specialist, what I can say to you, the NFTs are removing the centralized stuff. 
the same as like the blockchains actually. So the idea of using the NFTs usually is to like give the rights to the users and remove the centralized owner of something. For example, if you have like a music label, you don't need a music label if your music is NFT. So that's the way you should think about that. Also, right now, there is a, that big uh, like tokenization business going on with the assets. It's kind of cool. It also could be used like that. So please take a look, read more articles, come up with your new ideas, and we'll see. And as Lavo was saying earlier, um, this is definitely a space that changes constantly. Um, so yeah, creativity and innovation is definitely uh, top marks for our hackathons. Yeah, Amazing. Aman, actually, I don't know what is bonding cur curve. So probably it's something from training or like uh, trading or finance. Uh, sorry, I'm not not, not an, an expert in terms of the bond bonding curves, so I cannot help you with this. But I um, can help you with Aurora. So. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. If anyone has any more questions or uh, perhaps if you want, yeah, of course, I'll put it in the Discord uh, technical questions channel. Yeah, I already uh, sent a message there and uh, le left a mention of myself. So feel free to use my uh, Discord nickname and handle uh, to point some questions there. Awesome, awesome. So um, I'm assuming there are no more questions. And as we said, if there are, of course, uh, go on to our Discord. Uh, Slav has already introduced himself. So please, yeah, just tag him and hope um, he should be notified. But thank you, everyone, for joining our first, our launch event and also our first workshop. It has been a very exciting day for the Aurora Hackathon. Um, and massive thank you to um, Slava and Boris from the Aurora team for joining us today. It has been super fun, learned a lot. Um, yeah, super insightful on my behalf. So really excited to see what will be uh, the end result of the four weeks. Uh, so without further ado, I'll let you guys um, enjoy your morning, your evening, maybe your afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Uh, but as uh, Slava said, please do keep in touch and stay connected with us on Discord. And we'll see you tomorrow for our, our next uh, workshop event, uh, which will be held in Spanish. How exciting. Yay. Yay. <laughs> see you. See you. Amazing. See you, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.